if Shopify decided they were going to have 10 retail locations in 10 cities, it's a crazy thought, of course. What would you do in those 10 locations? Would you just allow people to rent them by the day to do special events? I mean, why doesn't that exist? Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's... Um, I have nothing prepared for this, but I think it would be a cool idea. Like the thing is, like we need, like the the year-long lease is clearly not right, so that needs to be disrupted somehow. Mm. So, you know, one easy way to do it is larger entities taking a lot of space and giving out, giving out for terms to other people. So, like kind of industrializing in in a way um, mm. the. Um, uh, the the pop up shop uh, shop concept compression of demand. Why hasn't kind of anybody things. done that? It's such a great idea. Why did the pop up sh stores in New York? For people who don't know what a pop up store is, yeah. it's a store that's open for a limited amount of time. Yeah. But because of the retail, you're saying because of the, having to sign the lease, it just makes it untenable right. to somebody who's got a smaller business. And and I mean you you encounter all the problems that an Uber or someone would like. You, you have to like this is a company which is best started by a. Um, um, hacker with a crazy disregard for, for status quo and a lawyer because you really like you're gonna fight bylaws everywhere. Like most oh. cities most cities don't allow businesses like to sign like to, to come in anywhere with, uh, under like a month or even yeah. a quarter. Um, so so this is one of those businesses which is just really messy if you wanted to yeah. get into into it. So um, I don't honestly know. Maybe 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 this is the future of of, of, of Best Buy again like but um, I think it should be done. Yeah, I, I would love for someone to do it. Uh, I would it love to be able to go and be like, meet the people who created this product on the first Monday of every month. They take over the store for, you know, whatever, right. 18 hours from right. eight, from 7 a.m. until 11 p.m. They're going to do an experience just for this company that makes beautiful cases. Mm -hmm. And you meet the CEO and you meet the product manager and they go through what they thought of and they show you the, the five new man yeah. bags and mercers and satchels and and this is i mean it's such a good point because i mean why is kickstarter successful it's intimate personal innovative the experience i don't even like it i don't think it, uh, the kickstarter success has anything to do with crowdfunding it's it's a completely mis misattribution of a success the reason why kickstarter is successful is because it forces the actual person who mm. comes up with a product to make a video about it right that's completely accidental and everyone forgets about this but if the people who create the products, the people who know more than anyone else in the world about something, tell you not just what the product does and all the kind of platitudes that mm. the marketing industry has focused on for the last hundred years, but rather the reason of why they went there, why they built this, mm -hmm. why this is a product that needed to come into existence, you have a much, much more powerful thing. And that is a problem that Best Buy brings. Like the problem is when you have someone like Best Buy, they will not tell you the story. And the channel between the people who create the things, the creators, the curators, the craftspeople, these, that there's a layer between them and the consumers is just simply a, a, a construct of um, history that is related to how distribution was owned previously. And if it can be shattered, it is extremely powerful. Because like you, I would like, um, um, when, when, when I go to buy something, I would like the person who came up with this to explain to me why this is, why this is useful. And I think there's a way to, to build um, an infrastructure to, 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 to make this happen and disintermediate like, this whole process and make it a lot more interesting. Like, if, if you have products, um, if you have products that have barcodes, mm. Amazon is going to be the best in the world to sell these things, and there's nothing you can do. Like Amazon is the logical end conclusion of this branch of retail that is a department store. Right. Um, and, and no department store will be able to survive against them once they realize that and actually build department stores or just buy all the best buys or whatever. Yeah. Right. So um, that's going to happen. Which is what's left. The left are the products that don't have barcodes. The things that, again, are owned by creators and, and curators and people who add a lot of value to these things. Like, again, it's the snowboards that we used to sell. Um, Some so non-commodity product. Exactly. But it's the interesting stuff. It's the stuff yeah. that we want. You know, like... Um, yeah, the stuff we need, like deodorant or coffee beans or yeah. whatever. But we really desire the satchel that's handcrafted or the iPhone case that's got the three extra features that are really well thought out. Yeah, or if you, build, if you buy a guitar, like the guitar industry is really, really great. Like these, this is like very small business, usually 50 people per company, somewhere in the United States, 
selling these things um, you know, to a guitar store or a guitar center, but also throughout their own websites. And they tell their own stories, and they do a really great job. It's, it's a much, much better experience. If you can tour those factories, that's, that's really what we need again, like this sort of mm. um, you know, intimate relationship with, with the things. Artisanal is like the movement in food, right? Absolutely. Small, small packets and stuff like that.